Hello, my name is Maurice Nallen, and welcome to part one of our three-part AV booth badging course. In this first session, I'll be showing you how to use the audio recording hardware at Ideaspace's vocal booth. The AV booth has two microphone stands, each equipped with a condenser microphone, a pop filter, a reflection filter, and headphones. We've set up the studio computer outside of the AV booth so that one person can man the studio computer while the other person performs inside. At the desk is one Windows computer, two studio monitors, a Blue Yeti microphone, and a Focusrite Claret 8 Pre-X audio interface. The interface is what you'll be using most when recording at Ideaspace. The 8-channel interface is what allows you to input sound into the studio computer. At first glance, the audio interface may seem intimidating due to the number of buttons and dials. Fortunately, many of the controls serve the same function across the channels. R2 condenser microphones are attached to the interface via XLR cables. There are additional XLR and line inputs across eight channels. If you'd like to bring in your own instruments or microphones, ask a staff member and they'll help you set it up. There are four basic channel controls which repeat eight times, once for each channel. The first is the 48 volt switch which powers the microphone. This switch must be activated in order for the microphone to work. The second is the high pass filter which filters out low frequencies. The third is a phase reverse which reverses the polarity of the sound wave. And the fourth and final control is the gain dial which adjusts the input level of your microphone. Turn the gain up higher to increase the microphone sensitivity. There are also two instrument inputs on the front of the interface, to the left of channels 1 and 2. The rest of the interface controls are located on the far right. The rising and falling bars are the level meters, which displays the decibel meters for each channel and studio monitors. If the levels are turning red, it's a sign you need to turn down the gain. The large black dial beneath the level meters is the monitor dial, which controls output to your monitors. Turn the dial up or down to control the monitor volume. If you need to quiet your monitor output slightly, you can press the dim button to lower your output by 18 decibels. Below the dim button is a mute button if you need to silence your monitors. The power button is located to the far right of the interface, but please leave it on at all times. There are two headphone jacks in the front of the interface, each with separate volume controls. We have one headphone plugged in at all times. If you'd like a second headphone, just ask a staff member. If you want to record a simple voiceover or a podcast with more than one person, the Blue Yeti microphone might be a better option than the condenser mics. The Yeti mic uses a USB input and cannot be used at the same time as the Focusrite audio interface. Like the interface, the Yeti mic has a volume dial and mute button on the front of the mic. On the back of the mic is a gain dial as well as a pattern switch. The pattern switch allows you to switch between recording modes. The word pattern refers to the microphone's directional sensitivity. There are four patterns in total. The first is the stereo mode, which uses the left and right audio channels to capture a wide range of sound. The second is the omnidirectional mode, which will record sound evenly from all around the Yeti microphone. The third is cardioid mode, which only records directly in front of the microphone. If you're recording a voiceover, you'll want to use cardioid mode. The fourth and final pattern mode is the bio-directional mode, which records to the front and back of the microphone simultaneously. This mode is perfect for interviews, where you have two people sitting across from each other. If you come into Ideaspace to record a podcast, let us know and we'll set up a laptop and a Yeti mic in the AV booth for you. That covers the basics of the audio recording hardware. In step two, I'll be showing you how to use the camcorder and green screen. See you next time.